Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. This is our uh, second lecture in electrical machine. Actually, uh, we have started uh, the introduction of the terminologies uh, used in the electrical machine subject. Uh, in the first lecture, we have studied about the conductor, the coil, the ele winding element, etc. Now we are uh, going a step forward dual the pool pitch and dual the coil spin or the coil pitch so these are the two things which are very important and we are now going toward the uh, explanation of such type of the topics now actually in the electrical machine language in many of the, of the electrical machine books the pool pitch is defined as it is actually the distance between the two the two poles. That is a simple definition. The distance between the two poles of an electrical generator or electrical machine is called as the pool pitch. Now, actually, actually, this is this this pool pitch is measured in terms of the uh, slots on the periphery of the armature. Now we are going toward the explanation of this thing. Uh, I have a figure here. That we have a north pool and a south pool. As we know, there are consecutive pools on the yoke or um, on the stationary part of a uh, DC generator. So, if this is a north pool and this is a south pool, then here from the center of this pool to the center of this pool, here is some distance. If you look, here is some uh, distance. Now, this distance between the consecutive poles is called as the pool pitch of this machine. Whether this machine may be a DC motor or whether this machine may be a DC generator. Now, actually in electrical terms or electrical machine uh, subject, we usually measure this distance not from the yoke side. This is actually the yoke, that is the stationary part, yoke side. Actually, uh, we measured this distance in terms of the armature conductor or the armature slots. Now, here if we go toward the new definition and the pull definition of the pull pitch, uh, then it becomes uh, like a the distance between the consecutive pools of a DC machine is called as the pool pitch but this pool pitch must be mirrored in terms of the armature slots or the armature conductor on the periphery of the armature core for example let's suppose here is the one slot one slot two slot three slot four so here between these two poles there are four slots so it means that the pool pitch of this machine is poor this is necessary it is uh, necessary to understand such type of the thing. For example, we have a machine which has uh, four poles and there are, let's suppose, let's suppose there are uh, two slots. We are generally explaining the thing. There are two slots. There are four poles and there are two slots. Slots. Then we have pole per slot. Sorry, the slots per pole is called as what? the slots per pole is called as mm, the pool pitch of this machine so we will divide 2 divided by 4 that equal to 0 0.5 that is actually the pool pitch so the slots per pole is called as the pool pitch so actually mm, we, if we go to another example let's suppose we have mm, we have 16 number of the slots and we have only 4 poles of the machine then 16 divided by 4 equal to what 16 divided by 4 equal to 4 slots per pole. This is actually the pole pitch. Now, another term, another terminology or another uh, word that I have used is that this is actually in some dip, in some books or in some practice uh, we actually define the pole pitch as the distance between the consecutive poles measured in terms of the armature conductor between that poles. Now, if we have, let's suppose according to their definition, we have, let's suppose 100 number of the conductors here all around the armature. And we have, let's suppose, let's suppose we have a 25 number of the poles, which is usually not the case, but we are taking. We have 20, 25 number of the poles and we have 100 number of the armature conductors. 
now what will be the pole pitch so this will be z divided by p equal to 100 divided by 20 pi that equal to 4 so it means that the slots per pole is called uh, the slots per pole will be the resultant uh, pole pitch of the machine now this is actually the explanation of the pole pitch that pole pitch is a uh, the distance between the consecutive poles whether that is measured in term of the armature conductor or whether that is measured in armature uh, uh, which whether that is measured in uh, the terms of the armature conductor or whether that is measured in uh, terms of the armature slot it depend upon the conditions and depend upon the book and depend upon the uh, the practice now we are going to all the second thing which is very important hope you are getting the point and that is the coil span or the coil pitch now this is a a little bit different thing the coil pitch is actually the distance uh, between the two sides in simple terms the distance between the two sides of a coil is called as the coil span or the coil pitch most of the book define this thing as this is actually the distance on the armature periphery spanned by a coil is called as what is called as uh, the coil span or the coil pitch for example we have a coil this is the coil here this is the coil let's suppose now the distance between here and here it is called as the coil span or the coil pitch if you look here this is a coil here this is the front side of the coil this is the back side of the coil now this distance from here to here it is called as what it is called as the a coil span this is called as the coil span or another word that is used for it another name that is used for it is the coil pitch now in most of the cases you will see here are the two terms which are also important some of the winding that may be uh, wave winding we will study inshallah or that may be uh, the lap winding in most of the cases you will see that people will say this is a short pitch wind this is a full pitch wind now what does it mean that what is a full pitch winding and what is a short pitch, pitch winding actually and uh, the full pitch winding is that type of the winding in which the two coil sides the two sides of a coil are the two uh, coil side you know, both sides of the coil I mean, are placed at the centers of the consecutive pole let's suppose this is coil side number one and this is coil side number two this this one this dotted shape here yeah this now let's suppose this coil side number one is placed here under the north pole and this coil side two is placed here under the south pole now if you look this coil will having a shape here it will be located over here now if you look at this this coil side number one is under exactly under the north and this is two side is exactly under the south now such type of the winding or such type of the uh, the winding that may be lap or that may be wave winding we will call this winding as the full pitched winding if you look here the coil span or the coil pitch is equal to the pole pitch this is actually this is important the coil pitch and the coil and the pool pitch and the coil pitch are the coil span are equal if you look the coil span here is this is the coil span from here to from one side to second side we have defined that the distance between the two sides of a coil is called as the coil span now if you look this from one side to two side this distance and from the north to the south according to the definition the pool pitch this distance are equal now if the pool pitch is equal to the coil pitch then it is a pole pitched winding and in such type of the cases the emip induced will be maximum because there will be no phase difference between the two uh, the, bit, the, the emip induced in the two side means that there will be no there will be the maximum emip induced in the side number one and side number two and they will be added arithmetically in the emip induced in the side number one in this case and the side number two 
should be added arithmetically because there will be no angle between in simple term there will be no angle between the emip induced hair and the emip induced hair so we we added uh, such type of the emip in the full page winding in the both set arithmetically and that will be the maximum the maximum emip induced now in most of the cases the short page to winding are used so short page winding is actually if a winding is short pitched if someone says to you that this winding is short pitched what does it mean it actually means that this side one or this side two of the coil has been lead or legged from the center of the north pole actually most of the cases this is a leg leg is actually not the term that is a correct but it if if this one side is come here and it's placed in this slot let's suppose here in this slot this will be the new coil now this uh, this 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 winding is actually short pitched because in that case that were pull pitched now if this is short pitched so such type of the winding will be called as the short pitched winding in which uh, the coil side 1 and the coil side 2 are not exactly under the consecutive north or the south poles so such type of the winding we will call as the short pitched winding now the short pitch winding have a property that the emip induced in the one dash let's suppose we we say this is one dash this is the new coil that is short pitched that one replaced by the short pitched now let's suppose the one the one side the emip induced in the one side and the emip induced let's suppose in the second side they will not be added arithmetically there will be a phase difference between the emip side in the 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 emip induced in the side number one and the emip induced in the side number two so now we will add a vectorially the emip induced in the side one dash and in the side two dash so in that case if you look at the scenario the sum of the vector number one let's suppose it is 10 and it is also 10 so one can easily say that uh, the addition of the two vector is 20 that is also the arithmetically it is also 20 now if this vector is 10 and this vector is also 10 but now there is some angle between the two theta 